Welcome back to Iowa Live. Lou and Michelle here. And last night was the 10th time the Funny Bone here in Des Moines got a whole bunch of comics together and had a chance to let them show their worth up on stage. This is kind of a cool thing. If you have never heard about this, folks, uh, they do have what is called Clash of the Comics. Now, what Clash of the Comics is, is an ability for uh, comics to come in and then show their stuff. They each have five minutes. It has to be clean material, too, okay. for five minutes. So these are the folks that were there. Uh, Joan LaRosa, Clifton Antone, uh, Wes Kozad, Karen Swanson, Jeremy Cartwright. Those were the first batch of people that did go up uh, second as they continue to go up through the night. Five minutes increments. It moves along rather quick. Mark Sibbett was there. Sean Dengler. Uh, Ty Ingram was there. Johnny Bush was there. He was the closer. So while they were tabulating all the scores, Johnny Bush was up on stage doing his thing. He's a funny guy. He really is. But Dan Umpton, uh, he was the guy hosting the event who you've seen on his this show as you have John Bush as well. But Dan had the honor of letting everybody know after all the scores were tabulated amongst all the judges <laughs> who the winner of Clash of the Comics was. Here's Dan. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Mark Sibbett, everybody. <laughs> Give it up for Mark Sibbett. So that means you'll be coming back and, uh, Hosting a night here at the Des Moines Funny Bone. There you go, and then that is the one of the prizes is you get to host a night at the Des Moines Funny Bone. Mark Sibbett is the winner of round 10 of Clash of the Comics, and Mark well, here he is, is live from and in Omaha. Person. Tying Woo! back into uh, you know, what we just got talked about on this day. Congratulations, yeah. man. Thank you very much. You hung I, out. I you, appreciate you it. You made some plans. You stayed in town tonight so you could be with us today. Tell everybody who you stay with to give credit where credit's due. I did. Uh, my cousin, Angela Campbell. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for her. Uh, she brought out about five friends with her. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have had yeah, any. I wouldn't have had any supporters there. Wow! Uh, being a Nebraskan, I definitely wouldn't have had any supporters. <laughs> <laughs> because you try to keep that under wraps for a little while. Because again, the rivalry that goes on between Nebraska and Iowa. But what made you want to come to Des Moines and compete in the Des Moines Clash of the Comics? Um, honestly, uh, being a beginning comic, I try to find any stage opportunity that I can, and that's just. I mean that. It's a grueling process, um, and the fact that I'm willing to drive two hours one way to get five minutes of stage time, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's, tells you. That's true, yeah. But that's what they say. Every All of the comics that are made, you just got to keep keep going and keep doing, and the more you, yeah, performing if, wherever you can. If that's not an addiction, I don't know what is. <laughs> How did you get into it? How did you get into start doing comedy? You said you're fairly new in your uh, business. In college, I was an English major for a few years. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to college? Uh, I went to uh, UNL, actually, okay. the Huskers. Sorry to bring that up again, guys. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just here to give you another opportunity He's to laugh at Nebraska. <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was, I was a Husker, but uh, for a few years, I was an English major, uh, so I always kind of called my myself a writer okay. um, but then uh, literally about 20 years passed and I still called myself a writer without writing anything and uh, so I challenged myself a few years ago um, at age 38 which was which was challenging for me to make the decision to try stand up at, at 38 that was oh, tough wow. for me um, but I challenged myself to, to start writing and just write one line every day and just see what happened. And it just kind of stoked the fire and it just kind of snowballed from there. So, really? yeah. so yes. did you always kind of have in the back, you know, the, the whole, you know, even when you were in your 20s or whatever? Yeah, I, I secretly dreamed of it when I was in high school. Okay. I never told anybody because I, I felt like that would be cocky or too arrogant or something were, to yeah. think that I was that funny because I was kind of shy a little bit in high school. But the people that really knew me always told me that I was one of the funniest people that they knew. Um, so that kind of always festered Stop. back in there. And, and uh, yeah, I fell in love with stand-up comedy when I was in high school. Uh, Chris Rock and, and uh, Jerry Seinfeld right, and right. Eddie Murphy and all those guys. And I fell in love with it and I, and I, and I thought about it forever. And then I finally did it about 20 years later. Wow. Now, <laughs> yeah, good like for Eddie, you, though. It's like never Eddie too Eddie Murphy. Did you ever think about getting a leather suit like Eddie Murphy going up on stage? And <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to see that. <laughs> Trust me. Because you're not a small guy. No you're a tall dude. How tall are you? Uh, I'm 6'6", six, six, actually, yeah. yeah. So I was, I was an athlete back in the day. I played a lot of sports. And uh, my grandpa actually pitched for the Minnesota Twins, which is cool. No way. Um, he's, he's got a few baseball cards. He, he played with, like, Harmon Killebrew. No, really? Yeah, he did. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, so that was cool growing up. Having, having a grandpa doing that. So I, I wanted to be an athlete. It just didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, not everybody has a major league pitcher arm. So that was kind of a tough act to follow for <laughs> yeah, me. You know, kind of. But, <laughs> but you came on stage last night. We were over at the Funny Bone last night. When you came on stage, you commanded the stage when you got there because you walked up there and you can tell the audience was looking at you going, all right, <laughs> Why do I know this guy? Who does this guy look like? And you beat him to the punch. Tell everybody what you did. Yeah, so basically I feel like I have to address this right up front every time. And I, I just said, I know what you're thinking. I'm, I'm basically the offspring of Bigfoot and Ben Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> there is definitely a strong then, resemblance. Yeah. Well, I'm not Bigfoot, but yeah. <laughs> we, were, uh, we, we, were look, uh, we were watching the crowd when he said this, and there was people going, that's it, that's it. That's, that's the one. one. <laughs> so you hit the nail on the head. Looks like somebody. And yeah. is that the key to when it comes to writing a good comedy for yourself, is trying to find out what triggers people? Yeah, um, I think the key, and I'm just, you know, I'm only three years into it, so I'm, I'm a beginner, but right. I'm trying to find my way, you know, but... I figured out that I think uh, you have to be relatable, uh, but then have your own unique spin to it. Mm -hmm. So you can't be so unique, especially at the beginning, where you know you can't have an underground following at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, so you have to find a way to be relatable still uh, and and be unique. So the first time that I did this competition a year and a half ago, one of the judges tore me apart, um, and he gave me terrible scores. Uh, but I but I really listened to what he said. He, he just told me, he's like, you need more relatable material. I was trying to be too unique and just kind of, it was just a little too... And it's more too, like it's an inside and, joke. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be very candid, uh, you know, that was uh, some of the uh, the uh, the issues that a couple of the the competitors of yours had last night. They had some great material, but they needed to be a little more current. They needed to be a little more on top of things. And, and yeah. you see, you're, that's one of your primary concerns. Yep. And, uh, you know, another thing is making the flow set together, which, you know, that's that's where I've grown a lot in the last year and a half. I looked at my set from a year and a half ago and I thought it was terrible. There were some funny jokes in there. Right. But it didn't flow together. And, and when you're doing only five minutes like this, it, it just it has to flow, um, you know, two topics really at most mm -hmm. to try to stick to two topics and just make it flow and have it be relatable. Right. Can you so. tell right away whether or not things are going your direction? Yeah, I mean the the Bigfoot Ben Stiller thing usually starts off pretty well. Mm -hmm. Like I I usually I use that as my opener every time, and people in Omaha are sick of hearing it because <laughs> I've I've been using it for three years. Really, almost almost every set, but it's when I walk up there, almost everybody is thinking that. So, so when you address that right away and something in the room, it it kind of brings everybody on the same page and right. it, it starts to build the trust like right away, right that's, off the bat. That so. is awesome. Now you said that uh, you just started doing comedy. This is not your full time job, and that's part of the part of the <clears> gig <throat> for uh, Clash of the Com Comics. Is it, these are not full time comedians. Yeah. And so you're doing rather well. You won this competition, which is great. But so what, what do does you that mean then with the, with this title? Uh, so it means that I get to host for an evening at the Funny Bone, uh, which is a great opportunity okay. because I get to be on the big stage. It's probably going to be a sold out show like all the shows this weekend. Uh, the only show this weekend that's not sold out is tomorrow night at 930. Okay. So now uh, speaking to that, now, since you are uh, going to be a representative of the Funny Bone now, why don't yeah. you let us know what's coming up at the Funny Bone. Okay. Yeah. Like, for example, this weekend. Uh, this weekend, Samuel J. Comro. So it'll be fantastic. Like I said, uh, the three shows are sold out already. So the only one that's open right now is Saturday at 930. Okay. So get your tickets now for that. Uh, Christopher Titus is another veteran who's fantastic. Um, he's going to be in town the first week of June, so okay. that'll be a great show. Um, and then the uh, Dry Bar Comedy Tour, they have a huge online following. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's at the end of January. Ton yeah, tons of people are, are into those guys. Um, so Josh the Sneed, he's been on before. He's got uh, yeah. some good yeah. stuff on so there. there that's the last weekend in June. The last so, weekend so of June. So they have a great lineup for the next month coming up, yeah. Right. Now, uh, if this comedy thing starts rolling, are you going to be one of these that want to still be based out of the Omaha area, or are you going to start traveling around like some of these comics that you mentioned are doing? I'd love to start traveling around. I mean, I've kind of been branching out, you know, started in Omaha, obviously, and then kind of, you know, Iowa. It's, it's mainly Omaha and Iowa right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a set um, at a club in Scottsdale. Uh, Arizona uh, next week, which I'm really excited about. Oh, oh so. yeah, I just do Iowa and Nebraska. That's it. But I'm going to be in Scottsdale, just, by the way, Michelle. Yeah, right. I, I live, I live, I live there gig? for 10 years. So 
Uh, but they, it's actually just an open mic, but it's like an open mic on steroids. Really? And it's like a full funny bone room, and it's just an open mic at wow. this club in Old Town Scottsdale. Yeah, well, that's Not it, yeah. to talk, you know, keep talking about them, but it's just a great opportunity. You have to sign up like three months ahead of time. Wow. Which that kind of speaks to the grind of, you know, just starting out. You have to sign up three months ahead of time and try to get on the list. And then, you know, obviously fly down there to do it and all that stuff. So. Yes, but these competitions like you were in last night, those are really important, though, aren't they? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, you know, I'm really thankful for the Funny Bone giving uh, beginners like me the opportunity to do that. Um, it gives us a taste of the big stage. Um, and then the networking is huge, too. So, like, you know, you asked, what do I get out of this? The when you host for a weekend, you get to hang out yeah. with, with the feature act and the headliner all weekend and get to know them. And the networking part of it is is really where it's at. As important so as anything else. It is, it? yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, so so what do you do for a full-time gig then before you uh, become this superstar comedian? I'm a server at a restaurant. Uh, I'm a server at Mahogany Prime Steakhouse in Omaha. Okay. So it's fantastic. Uh, great food. I'm actually just finishing training right now, so... Um, but I, I've just been staring at all this food constantly for the last two weeks. <laughs> Could you imagine this guy? You probably, get a lot of, you probably get some good material with that gig, I would imagine. Oh, I've been yeah? taking notes every day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Could you imagine this guy being your server <laughs> at, at a great. great place like that, a great steakhouse Make like that? Fun. I think it'd be awesome. But uh, it was awesome to hear your name announced last night. And Thank we just you, want yeah. to say congratulations. Congratulations, man. Uh, again, Thank you so much for coming in and spending uh, the evening uh, to be uh, having a chance to spend some time with us. But again, tell everybody who's going to be at the Funny Bone again this weekend. Yeah, uh, Samuel J. Comro. Uh, like I said, uh, all the shows are sold out except for Saturday night, uh, tomorrow night at 930. So get your tickets now. They're selling fast. There you all go, right. folks. He is the uh, the 10th. We'll be watching for you. Yeah, Clash of the Comic Thank winner, you. folks. Mark Sibbett, congratulations again. You're going to be seeing a lot more of this guy. When you come back, let us know. Okay, I will. When, you, when you're doing your hosting duties, so I will. Thank people you. know that you're going to be there. Yeah, yeah I appreciate Perfect. it. Thanks again, man. Thanks appreciate it. Congratulations. Okay. Good nice job. Yeah, Ten minutes. You.